Hello folks, this is Rev Barry Brown, University Physics graduate student. Today we're looking at yet another physics GRE problem. Today's problem is about kinematics and using the conservation of energy to figure out which ball is going to land on the ground faster. So let's take a look. So here's the problem. We have an inclined plane and we have two objects on the inclined plane. We have a sphere and we have a cylinder. So we have a sphere with a mass of capital M and a radius of capital R. And on the same inclined plane, I can't draw them both at the same time, so I'll draw the same inclined plane here. There is also a cylinder. So here's my cylinder. The cylinder has a mass of lowercase m and a radius of lowercase r. So the question is, if both of these objects are released from the same height, h, then which object? No, no, not that. What is the condition for the cylinder to land on the ground before the sphere? Okay. So what is the condition for the cylinder, or the time of the cylinder, to be less than the time of the sphere? OK, so how do we solve this problem? Well, whenever you see this kind of a problem where it's asking about time, your first thought might be kinematics, you writing down you know, Vf is equal to Vi plus At, and then extracting time from there somehow. But it's actually much easier if we approach this problem from a conservation of energy perspective. So with that being said, let's write down, let's apply the conservation of energy at the initial point over here and the final point over here for both the cylinder and the sphere. Okay, so let's start with the sphere. For the sphere, we have to write the initial energy, E sub i, is equal to the final energy. What is the initial energy of the sphere? There's only a potential energy of the sphere up at the top. So I'm going to write PE sphere. And what is the final energy of the sphere? Well, when the sphere reaches this point, there's only going to be a kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the sphere. Now, what is the potential energy of the sphere at the very top? Well, it's just going to be the gravitational potential energy, MGH. What's the kinetic energy at the bottom? Well, there's going to be translational kinetic energy of the sphere as it moves plus rotational energy of the sphere as it rotates, okay? So the kinetic energy translationally is just one half. Oh, now the sphere has a mass capital M, so let me use the correct mass. So this will be one half m v squared, uh, v sphere squared, plus the rotational energy of the sphere is one half i, where i is the moment of inertia of the sphere, omega of the sphere squared, okay? So that is great, and we have MGH here. Now, we know that, or we will be given on the physics theory, that the moment of inertia of a sphere is 2 over 5 mR squared. Okay, so if I plug that in over here, then I have 2 over 5 mR squared. Now notice that from both sides, I have mass canceling out. So let's see if I have my red pen. The mass cancels out from both sides. And so we're left with gh is equal to 1 half v squared plus um, this, these two cancels out and omega sphere squared. Now, we can actually relate the angular velocity of the sphere to its linear velocity, right? Recall that the velocity, linear velocity, is r omega. So that means the linear velocity of the sphere is equal to the angular velocity times the radius of the sphere. Okay, now this should be capital R for the sphere because of the terminology we denoted here. So that means I can replace omega sphere squared with what? If I solve for omega sphere here, then this is just v sphere over r squared, right? So now if we just solve for this, then I get gh is equal to 1 half plus 1 fifth times the velocity, the linear velocity of the sphere squared, okay? Now let's compare this with the cylinder. So here, we're going to write down the same exact conservation law for the cylinder. The initial energy is the final energy. The initial, and, uh, the initial energy of the sphere of the cylinder is also mgh, this gravity, gravitational potential energy. The final energy of the sphere is going to be, let's see, so we're going to have once again a rotational component for the kinetic energy, but also a translational component, okay? So the translational component, as always, will be 1 half mv squared, where here we have the velocity of the cylinder, 
plus the, the rotational component is also going to be one half i omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia of the cylinder, omega is the angular velocity of the cylinder. Now, for a cylinder, since it's like a rod, um, its angular velocity, it's sorry, its moment of inertia is one half mr squared. So, with that being said, we can plug that in over here. We have mgh is one half m v sil squared plus one half, let's see, one half m r squared omega sil squared. Now, once again, we notice that mass cancels out from both sides. So that is not important. And once again, we can make the same substitution for omega. So instead of omega cylinder squared, I can write V cylinder over R squared. So that would lead to uh, the following. GH is equal to 1 half V cylinder squared. V cylinder squared plus 1 fourth. Now we have R squared and R squared canceling out from here. V cylinder squared. So that means GH is 1 half plus 1 quarter V cylinder squared. So now we can just solve for the velocities of the two objects. So let's see, 1 half plus 1 fourth. Let's see, that's going to be 1 half is, okay, so this is 3 fourths. So that means the velocity of the cylinder at the end is going to be 4 thirds of GH square root. And the velocity of the sphere at the end, let's add these two. So this will be 5 plus 2 is 7 tenths. So I'll have that the velocity of the sphere, if I flip this, this will become 10 sevenths. Okay, so take the square root. Now I'm not actually sure which is bigger, 4 thirds or 10 sevenths. So let's make them common denominators and see. So if I make this over 21 and this over 21, then this is 30 and this is 28. So clearly that means the velocity of the cylinder will always be greater than the velocity of the sphere. Uh, oh. I might have mixed it up. Let's see. This is velocity of sphere. I may have mislabeled them. Okay, and this is velocity of the cylinder. Yeah. So that means since uh, 30 is greater than 28, the velocity of the sphere will always be greater than the velocity of the cylinder. That's correct. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next.